Okay, folk, um, it's uh, time for a bit more chemistry, and um, this morning I'm going to talk about a bit of um, A2 chemistry, and that's um, some equilibrium theory. And for those of you who do Salter's A-level chemistry, this comes in the um, agriculture and industry um, unit. And for those of you at Wheatley Park School, you might remember before the individual investigation, we set up an experiment which had um, a load of boiling tubes and we made up a load of different mixtures and those mixtures represented um, starting points for um, one particular reaction. It was an esterification reaction, so it was ethanoic acid reacting with ethanol to make ethyl ethanoate and water. And some of the mixtures started with the acid and the alcohol, some of them started with the ester and the water. They all had an acid catalyst. Some of them started with a bit of both. And what we're going to try and demonstrate this week is that um, it doesn't matter where you start from, if you give them sufficient time to reach dynamic equilibria, um, they should have exactly the same value of the equilibrium constant. Should. Maybe. We'll hope. We'll see what happens. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to go through the chemistry. So if you've looked at this before the lesson this week, it's really useful. But it's also hopefully a useful thing to look back on when you're revising this particular bit of the um, car. So I'm going to um, go on to a bit of screen sharing and share a um, just a basic board with you today so that I can scribble on. There we go. Okay, so A2 equilibrium chemistry. So we'll get on to what we're going to do this week in a minute, but... Before we do that, just a sort of a, a recap of some of the stuff that we've um, covered in lessons, because uh, this is pre the individual investigation, so you might have forgotten it all. Um, so let's just come up with a generic uh, in, um, reversible reaction. So if I take X, add it to Y, and just use the reversible equation symbol thingamajiggy, and then let's say uh, we're making... 2z. Okay, that, believe it or not, is a z, believe it or not, that's a 2. Okay, so remember that if we've got 2z, that is the same as z plus z. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have chosen z. Never mind, we've got z now. Okay, so we can write what's called an equilibrium expression, and an equilibrium expression has a constant, and that constant is Kc. We'll meet other equilibrium constants in one of the forthcoming units called the oceans, um, but more of that later. So that is simply a ratio of the concentration of the stuff that we're making, the products, divided by the stuff that we started with. So this is concentration of Z. Now I could write the concentration of Z times the concentration of Z because we've got two of them. But as we've got two of them, that's much easily, uh, easier to write Z squared divided by the concentration of X times the concentration of Y. Okay, and that's an equilibrium expression. So this number here Okay, is a constant at a given temperature. And temperature is the only thing that's going to change the value of this. You often get questions about what will change the value of Kc or what will be the impact on the value of Kc if x, y, or z changes. The only one that will make any difference is temperature. The others will change the position of the equilibrium, like concentration, but once you get back to dynamic equilibria, after however long it takes, Kc will be the same. Likewise, if you have a catalyst, what you're doing is speeding up these reactions. You're not changing the balance either side, so Kc will stay the same in that situation as well. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, you also have to be able to quote the units of equilibrium constants, a bit like you have to do the same thing for rate equations, and you've got to give the units of uh, the K, the rate constant. Here, we've got units of concentration squared times units of concentration uh, sorry, units of concentration times units of concentration. So it's concentration squared over concentration squared. So this particular example has no units. Okay, it is just a ratio. If, on the other hand, I had x plus y in equilibrium to make... Oh, let's have something different. Let's have c. Uh, Kc would be equal to the concentration of c divided by 
the concentration of X times by the concentration of Y. Okay, so in this case, the units, we've got a concentration divided by concentration times concentration. So at the bottom, we've got concentration squared. So concentration is in moles per decimeter minus 3, and we've got moles decimeter minus 3. That's going to be an O there. Okay, and that's squared because we've got two of them. Okay, so that's going to cancel with that. So we've got 1 over units of concentration. So the signs up here change. So that's moles to the minus 1 dm cubed. Okay. So you do get marks for quoting um, equilibrium constant uh, units correctly. That's a very commonly asked thing. Okay, let's go to the example that we're going to be dealing with we're in the lesson and we set up a while ago. I'm going to go red because I like a different color. Um, so, real example. So we had CH3COOH, we had ethanoic acid reacting with ethanol, CH3CH2OH. This is just a standard esterification reaction in the presence of an acid catalyst. Um, some dilute sulfuric acid we used, I believe. And that will make ethyl ethanoate and a bit of water. Okay, and we'll write the equilibrium expression over here. Okay, C equals, so it's these two here. I'm going to be lazy and write ester. H2O divided by these two here, so the ethanoic acid. So this is going to be another example of an equilibrium expression that doesn't have any units for case C because we've got concentration times concentration divided by concentration times concentration. Okay, so this is no units. All right, okay, so we've got that expression. So you might get a question where you're given some of these things and you just have to bung it into the equation. Or you're given Kc um, and you've got three of these and it's just, just a simple matter of bunging in the values into the expression. What we're doing in the lesson and what you might get to do, which is a slightly more complicated thing, is to work out what Kc is from a particular starting mixture. So we don't know the equilibrium composition until we've done a bit of a calculation. So this is what we're going to do. So let's just assume, in this particular example, we're starting with just ethanoic acid and ethanol, and we don't have any of the ethyl ethanoic there. We haven't made any water, but remember we've got an acid catalyst there, so we do actually have some water there. So there's a slight complication with the water, but back to that in a second. Let's have a different color for the fun of it. Let's have yellow. So let's suppose we measure out some ethanoic acid. This is glacial ethanoic acid. It's pretty much pure ethanoic acid. We weigh it so we can calculate how many moles we put into our mixture. And let's just, for the sake of argument, say we pick 0.1 of a mole. So this is initial. Okay, so this is to start with. And let's say we measure out some, this is neat alcohol. So we measure out a certain volume and weigh it. We could look up the density, I suppose, and do it that way. But we just weigh the stuff, and from its molecular mass, we work out how many moles we've got. So let's say we've got 0.5 moles to start with. Okay. That's a bit better. Right. So then we put it into a test tube, and we put some acid catalyst in it, and we cork it, and we know how much acid catalyst we've got there, we know the volume we put in there, and we leave it. And we've left it for four weeks, which is way more than you need to, but as that's how long the individual investigation lasts, that's fine. And we're going to analyze this. So what's going to happen is some of this stuff is going to react with some of this stuff to make the ester and a bit more water. Okay, so the concentration of these two is going to go down. Okay. At the moment, we don't know how much it's going to go down. 
by. But we can write this as a little sort of mathematical expression. It's going to go down by a certain amount. So we can put point 0.1 minus x there. So x is the amount of ethanoic acid that's actually reacted. But this is a one-to-one -one reaction. So it's one-to-one. -one. OK, so the amount of ethanol that has also reacted must be the same as the amount of ethanoic acid that has reacted. So x again. So this 0.5 has gone down by x. So it's 0.5 minus x. We still don't know what x is, but we'll worry about that in a minute. So it's also 1 to 1 here. So 1 mole of ethanoic acid would make 1 mole of ethyl ethanoic. But we know that X is the amount by which the ethanoic acid has gone down. So that's how much has turned into ethyl ethanoid. So the amount of ethyl ethanoid at equilibrium is X. Okay, maybe you can see where this is sort of starting to go. The amount of water, on the other hand, is a little bit more tricky because actually we've got water to start with. I'm going to say the amount of water is Y. Well, think about this in the lesson, but essentially, we know how much acid we've added, we know the volume, so we could be simple and make the assumption that the acid, it's dilute acid, is pretty much pure water, um, and therefore we could work out how many moles of water we've got there. Okay? If we know the density of the acid that we're using at the concentration, we can actually work out exactly how much water is there at equilibrium. What we'll do in the lesson is just assume that this um, dilute acid is, is more or less all water, and therefore that will give us an amount of water that we've got there to start with, which will be Y. So we'll need to work that out. We've also made some more water, probably not much compared to the value of Y. So it's, this is going to be Y plus X. So remember, Y we can work out, we know. Okay, what we don't know at the moment is what X is. We don't know how much has reacted. So what you're going to do is an acid-base titration. So we're going to take sodium hydroxide and titrate the mixture. Okay, and we've got an acid catalyst here. Okay, so that's going to react with the hydrogen ions, and we're going to make some water, and we'll have some sodium ions floating around. Uh, kind of aqueous sodium ethanoate and sulfate and so on. Sodium ion doesn't really matter. It's the one-to-one -one relationship here that matters. Now we know how much acid we've got there in terms of the catalyst. That's going to be constant. We put that in, we know how much we've got there. What we want to find out is, is how much ethanoic acid we've got at equilibrium. That's the, um, that's the key thing. So what we're going to do with this sodium hydroxide titration is get the um, total moles of H plus ions knocking around there. Okay. What we really want is the moles of ethanoic acid. And that's going to be equal to the total number of moles Ooh, that's an E there of H plus. Take away moles of H plus from the catalyst. Okay, so we know how many we got from the catalyst. We put this in. We might have put in 20 mils of one mole of sulfuric acid. So we can work out the number of moles of hydrogen ions we could have got from that. So we can work this out. We've measured this. So we can get the number of moles of ethanoic acid um, at equilibrium. And we know from our little thing up here that in this particular case is 0.1 minus x. Okay. So given that we know the number of moles of um, ethanoic acid at equilibrium, we can calculate what x is.
Once you know what x is, we can work out this. We've got this, because that's just x. We know what y is, because we know how much acid we put in to start with. And we know x, so we know the number of moles of water. So what we can then do is calculate what kc is by putting those values into this expression. Now these are numbers of moles, okay, whereas these are concentrations. But to go from a number of moles to a concentration, okay, what we're going to have to do is um, divide by the volume in decimeters cubed, which in this case is whatever the volume is divided by a thousand. Now all of these, this reaction mix, all of these are in the same volume, the same total volume. So this question mark here is the same for all of them. So we could convert all of these into concentrations, but we would be wasting our times because this, whatever the total volume is divided by a thousand, you're doing for this term, this term, this term, and this term. And because we've got um, the same number of concentrations top and bottom, all of these question mark divided by a thousand will cancel out. So in this particular case there's no need to convert these into concentrations. That would not be true for all cases, but in this particular one where there's no units then uh, that's certainly the case. So that's just a brief recap on how you do that sort of calculation. You've already done one in a lesson, um, different example. But exactly what you're going to have to do here will depend on where you started with. So this is an example of the calculation if you started with ethanoic acid and ethanol. But if you started with a mixture, so you started with some ethyl ethanoate, so you'll have a value here, and you'll um, this won't be the same. So this will be... Uh, depending on where you start, it might be x plus something else, whatever the initial concentration is here. So, that will be a problem to solve depending on which mixture you choose to titrate. But they all follow the same basic principle. And one other thing I'm just going to put on here, I'll go purple. So I'm going to say temp. temperature dependent, okay, and um, okay, see, if the forward reaction delta H is positive, so it's endothermic, okay, so if you increase the temperature, that's going to increase KC, so KC is going to go up. So an endothermic reaction is favoured by an increase in temperature. If you do the other, so if delta H is negative, a big negative sign there, if you increase the temperature, KC will go down because um, exothermic reactions are favoured by a lower temperature. The reason why a lot of reactions are done at a high temperature industrially is because that improves the rate of reaction. So you've got to balance one against the other. The other things like catalyst and concentration and pressure can change the position of the equilibria when you impose that change. That's Le Chatelier's principle. But when you reach dynamic equilibria, the um, KC will still be the same. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So that's just a little bit about what we're going to be doing in the coming week and a little bit of a guide to some A2 equilibrium chemistry. There is more aqueous equilibrium chemistry, buffers and Ka and stuff to come um, later on. Okay, thank you for watching.